In this video, I'm going to use the two uh, kits that I currently sell on eBay to assemble a bicycle booster pack. So the first one is the hardware kit. has all the nuts and bolts and the machined aluminum block uh, and fittings and such. And, uh, and then this is the new uh, printed parts kit. All the parts are made with PLA plastic. They're in white to kind of help reflect heat a little better. And um, I'm really happy with the way that they came out. So this is the standard package for 50 millimeter motors. If you want to get use a 60 millimeter motor, then you have to buy the upgrade package, which is just a little bit more because it involves a few more additional parts. So let's get right to it. So step one, I'm going to dump everything out. Just going to move that to the side. And then I'll use the box itself to keep the hardware bits from flying around, but I'm going to dump those out in here. And then all the tools you need to assemble this are really the two Allen wrenches that come with the kit, and then one Phillips screwdriver, and that's it. <clears throat> okay, so I, I've uh, taken a second to lay out the pieces. All I did was dump out all the plastic parts and put them here to kind of show the general configuration and uh, I'm going to configure the booster pack to be the mid mid drive mount where it's between your legs and it points backwards into your tire and in that configuration you don't actually use these two parts because they they're used for clamping it on a different way and we don't need them right now so all the holes are pre-threaded so I'll just be able to start grabbing stuff out of this box and putting it in so I'm going to start with the set screws. There's two different sizes of set screws in the kit. There's the 5 8 and the looks like a 3 8 Let's see. I'll lay out my Allen wrenches too. There's all my tools. So right now I'm going to grab the, the longer of the set screws and I'm going to insert them into this piece. They're used to stop the swing of the motor uh, and be an adjustable stop. So I just screw it in like that. I'm just going to kind of leave it sitting halfway in right now because I don't know how far I'm going to want it to go just yet. I'll put the other 5 8 one into the other hole. Okay. Uh, similarly, while we're doing the other set screws, this is uh, this is the motor swing arm. In this case, I'm going to use the shorter the shorter set screw. Its purpose here is to it's going to be to hold a nut into place. Let's see, it uses two of those for that. I'll put them through, but not so they're sticking into the hole. So I'll still have space to stick the nut in there when I go do that. Let's just finish putting in those set screws. Well, this piece takes a lot of them. It uses the uh, small set screws in the kind of angular spots also to hold in that nut that's going to go in there. up and go straight in. And then the other six spots take up the last long uh, set screws. So those will be those will need to go all the way through ultimately and clamp into the piece that, that sits in here. A little snug getting it in there, but that's okay.
Last two tiny set screws go into this, uh, I was calling the spring tension bushing. Same story, I'm just putting them in loose, I'm not poking out into the hole on the other side yet. So now I'm going to insert the nuts. Let me get this stuff out of here. Got this 5 16 nylock nut, I'm pressing it into the motor swing arm. So just put it in the vise, squish it flush. Just like that. And yeah, I'm going to need to get it a little farther in then the face of the vise can squish it, so I'm going to use the quarter inch nut that's also in the kit to push it, to just kind of sit it in there like that and push, push down on it a little further like that surface now. Make sure it's all the way in. Yeah. There it is. Until it's too hard to clamp. So now it's sitting on the bottom. Similar story with the uh, other nylock nut goes into the end of this piece right here. like that. That should seat itself just fine. You won't need to use anything else to push it down farther. I'll get it in there straight though, that's important. My vice is junk. This nut goes into the little tiny tiny handle piece. that thing out of here. I'm going to go back to this piece. I'm going to put the, uh, put this, I'm going to assemble this rear assembly now. So it's the uh, shoulder screw goes into the spring tension bushing. Then you put the spring on. You can't put it on, I mean there's no way to put it on backwards. It works both ways. And then that slips into this part. And the shoulder screw should be nice and loose, like that. And then, um, oh, oh, darn. One last thing. This piece needs to have the quarter inch spring pin pressed in. It has to go in from this face also because it, uh, it needs some sticking out. And, uh, 
order of operations, like that, this is the last piece you'll want to have pressed into the motor swing arm because after you put it in, it would be uh, really hard to put in that nut on the other side. Make sure I'm going in straight. Yep. This vice is just terrible. It's the only one I've got that's portable for a All the way to the back. It's sized to hit the back of the vise. And that leaves the appropriate amount sticking out the front. Now it can go in there. It sits in that little cove. And then you can see the set screws we put in earlier will we'll stop it, it uh, if we want to shorten the travel that it has. So to get that in there, we use our bigger Allen wrench. Just tighten it up. And uh, this has to be done while these set screws are loose because when you when you tighten them down, they'll hit this head and lock it in place. So I'll show you. This shoulder screw has to be tightened in all the way until the shoulder hits. These pieces will need to wear in a little bit, so I'm going to back the shoulder off actually, there. so that it needs to be able to swing freely. So I'm going to test it. I'm going to put push to one side and then tighten the set screw down, and that locks spring motion in place. The second one is just for extra strength so it doesn't slip. But that's that looks good. That looks a little too strong so but that'll be a fine tuning adjustment when I put it on the bike. There. <clears throat> Before we put in the last nut, which is this quarter inch nylock, I've got to put it on the uh, three inch long fully threaded shaft and I've got to put it on most of the way up and I'll show you why in a minute here. But to do that I'm going to use this end of this printed part here as a wrench slide it on there for the first time, there we go to screw it in. As a matter of fact I could just use the other end do it. Together they're going to go, they're going to get pressed into this piece and that provides a sort of a, a tension to keep the nut from being, rather than using a regular nut, it keeps it from flopping around uh, when you open up the clamp. That's the idea. This needs to be on almost all the way. And after you install it, you'll still you'll be able to readjust it really easily, so it's not a big deal if it's not far enough on. The uh, the variable that'll control whether it's far enough or too far is the diameter of the shaft that you're clamping. So now it's like that. Maybe I can sweet, I can press it in by hand. And then that is going to go into the barrel nut 